Okay, start at 20. Impression number four. So, I was talking about how World War II developed. You had the fighting in Europe, and then you had a fighting in Africa, but I didn't talk about that yet. And then you had the fighting in Asia. So, I was stressing ignorance. And the problem with ignorance is you don't know what's, what's going on, so when you make decisions or wrong decisions. So the Japanese military was basically in conflict with the Japanese civilian government. And so the military, Japanese military, wanted to do certain things, but they didn't know something. And the reason they didn't know it, because they didn't have the knowledge, number one, and experience. The key word here is experience. I mentioned a Japanese admiral. When he was an embassy official, he was a member of the Japanese Navy, but he was in the Japanese embassy in Washington, D.C. in the United States. He spent time at Harvard. He wanted to go, well, he learned English. And then he went and spent time at Harvard to find out what Americans really thought. And if I remember correctly, he did some traveling across the United States. And so he had two things. He had knowledge and he had experience. Experience means you actually do something. So that was this famous thing, blade of grass. Well, the Japanese military thought... Well, they went into Manchuria, and that was easy. They went into this Chinese city. That was pretty easy, because uh, China was sort of disorganized at that time. I'll talk about China another time. And so it was going to be easy to conquer China, because they were in Manchuria. And they were in Korea also. And so what happened then is they decided because the government of the United States would not give them what they wanted, they were going to take it. That means invasion. They were going to invasion of these, have invasion of these countries in Southeast Asia that had what they wanted. And I mentioned the main thing was oil, petroleum. Without oil, petroleum, you cannot run a machine. You cannot run a machine country. And it's not so much that fuel, it's the how you basically manage the means to work. You need something to make the machines to work. Another way you use is using grease, which is grease. It means you have the different parts of the machine work together. Otherwise, no machines. So, I told you they invaded China, one city, and pretty horrible there. Well, they decided Japan. And now I mentioned there was conflict between the Japanese government and the military. The military was very powerful. This is one problem. I'm going to mention this. There is a problem when the military of any country gets to be so powerful, it can be a danger to the whole country. We have many examples of that. Many examples. And so... They decided they were going to attack the United States. And they wanted to go because the United States had the island of the islands of Hawaii as you had American bases there and uh, you had uh, navy ships, US ships coming there and you had the army was there, American army was there, the air force was there and the ships were there. And you had submarines too. And so they decided to attack Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor is the city in Honolulu, which is the main city, the main island of the Hawaiian Islands. So they had a surprise attack. Now, I'm going to give you what FDR said, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. The next day, this was on December 7, December 7, 1941, 1941, they attacked. Now, there is a time difference now between Western Pacific and Eastern Pacific. So you remember that. So Franklin Roosevelt was in Washington 
and in Washington it was December 7, over in Hawaii it was December 8, just time different, didn't make any difference. So the Japanese attacked with the airplanes. So what the Japanese did, it was called a sneak -it attack. So what the Japanese did is they moved their Japanese ships from the way, from, 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 uh, what do they call it? From Japan down, just north of Hawaii. And they did it secretly, which means they didn't have a lot of communications between ships because one country's military tries to read the other countries, understand the other country's military communications. So they did it. And they got within striking distance. The word is striking difference. That means airplanes, Japanese airplanes can fly over the American city of Pearl Harbor and attack the American Navy because you had a lot of American Navy ships there. A lot of American Navy ships were in the harbor there and they would do it secretly. That means nobody would know. So they did it. Now there's an interesting point here about American military. This is American military now. They had some American military people that were checking communications in the northern part of the island. The island's called Oahu. They're in the northern part. And they had something called radar. R-A-D-A-R. -A -A radar means you can, you can spot other things from a distance on your machine. Radar. And they noticed some planes. This is American military now. You had some soldiers there, and they noticed that there were some airplanes coming, coming from the north part, and coming from the northern part into Hawaii. And they reported it. This is all true fact now. This is not story, this is fact. And they reported it. Well, the American commander down in Honolulu, that's the city where Pearl Harbor is, and they said, well, it's just the U.S. place there. You had, I mentioned we had the Army, the, the Navy. There was even a place for Marines there. Army, Navy was there, Air Force, and the commanding general of the American military there did not think it was important, or people did not think it was important enough to re mention it to him. I don't know who, who it was. Either he didn't know or people didn't report him. Anyway, the American Army, American military thought it was some of the American planes coming from California. Coming from California. And they were going a little bit above, what I say north, and so they would fly into they would American planes fly into American base. So Americans were not prepared. Now again, the problems, America did not understand the threat. So what happened is the, the Japanese army came in and attacked the ships in the harbor, in Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor, like I said, is a part of, of it's, a, it's a city there. That's where the you had the American Navy ships. You had a lot of ships there. And the Japanese airplanes came in and they were using bombs. And they were bombing them and destroying them. So they were sinking them. And you had several thousand American soldiers were killed. And there's even, again, you can see movies about this. And so the Japanese were trying to destroy the American Navy because the idea of Hawaii was that you had American control of Pacific and then they would go from the west coast of America to Hawaii and they would refit and then they would go from Hawaii further west in, that'd be west in Asia. Well, they came in and they just, a really bad attack. They killed several thousand American soldiers and destroyed several ships. And then they went back to Japan. So Franklin Roosevelt heard about it. Obviously, you have military communications. So he got up and he made an address to 
Congress, I think it was the next day or so, and President Roosevelt is talking to Congress in the United States. And what he started off to say in the beginning was, it's gone in, the, it's called famous thing. He said, this is a day of infamy. Infamy, I-N-F-A-M-Y, means something really bad. And he talked about the Japanese attack. And this is, I think, if I remember correctly, it was a day, this is an infamy which will live in American history, which means America will never forget this. So what happened is a lot of ships were sunk, not a lot, some, and then the U.S. had to try to rebuild the ships, which they did, and then they sent some other ships out from California. And the big base in California was around Los Angeles at that time. And so the America declared war. Now what happened at a time when countries would go to war, you had what was called a declaration of war, to declare war. That means our country is at war with your country. So America declared war on Japan. And the, the reason America said infamy is America had never declared war on America. It was a surprise attack. Now, sometimes in war you have surprise attacks. But here's the point for American history now. Before you had the fighting in Europe and you had some fighting in Africa, and it was basically Europeans and were fighting Germans in it, and not Americans. And British were fighting in Africa against the Germans and the Italians in North Africa. And then you had the Japanese in Asia, and then the Japanese were attacking the Americans and the British and the French in Asia. And so this is why they use the word infamy, surprise attack. And so what happened in about one day, one day, is the, the idea, ideas and emotion in America changed. The average citizen, the average people in America said, we have been unjustly attacked, meaning there has been no declaration of war. It was a surprise attack. We want revenge. We want to attack J Japan because Japan surprise attacked us. And what you had is the average citizens in America supported the war. They supported the war against Japan. And later Japan, Japan made an agreement. They had an agreement with Nazi Germany in Italy. And then eventually America decided to support Britain and then fight in Europe. So what happened then is you had World War II extended beyond Africa and beyond Europe. It extended basically into the whole world. It was called World War II. And so that is what happened. And so that changed the depression. So now depression, you had a problem. You had a problem basically that uh, you didn't have enough jobs and enough money for people. And immediately the United States government said, we will change our policy. We want the men, American men, to be soldiers. We want the American women to work in the factories. Notice what I said, not work in the offices, not work as just telegraph operators, as teachers. We want American women to work in the factories to make the things that we need to fight our war. And this is where you had the major change in America. Women flocked to the factories because women wanted to work. They also wanted to contribute. And the women got paid, obviously. So the women were not stayed, not forced to stay at home. They would work in the factories. And you had many, many famous people. You had famous photographs of people. You had one called Rosie the Riveter. Riveter basically means you're using screws and nuts to connect parts of machines. 
And that was a famous picture. Rosie, Rosie is a woman named for Rosalind or Rosie. Rosalind or Riveter. This is a ordinary woman. Ordinary woman works, works in an ordinary job. Used to be for men. Now it's for women because the men have to fight. And the women work in the factories. And most women welcomed it. And so you had basically now, and then America declared war in Japan, declared war and say America now is at war with Japan. And sometime in there, uh, Japan declared war in America. So this is the beginning of World War II for America. So the important point is uh, World War I started basically in 1939 when the Nazi Germany invaded Poland and then World War II included and then later the they went into the Nazis went in and occupied Paris, France and then there was resistance in France against them but now it's a worldwide war in the whole world you have people fighting so in Britain you had a lot of people from the British colonies they came to Britain to fight for Britain. And then you had, like I said, the British colonies were being attacked in Southeast Asia. American colony in Philippines was attacked. And so it was like a world war, a whole world war fight. Now there was one place there was no fighting. The place there was no fighting, can you guess which place? There was one continent there was no fighting in World War II. Can you guess what continent it was? Think a moment. I will give you a hint. The continent was full, was very cold and full of ice. Full of ice. So we're talking now about the continent Antarctica, which is south of South America. Well, you didn't have fighting there because obviously the climate, it means weather, the climate was so bad you can't fight there. It's too difficult to fight. So there was no fighting in Antarctica, but you had all this fighting in other continents. And I didn't talk about Africa. There was fighting in North Africa, North Africa. And so America was not, this is the United States, was not ready for war because they didn't expect war. So they needed time to fix the factories to get what they needed and to repair trained the people. And so you had American men joining the military and being trained. And you don't, you don't start a war and fight when you have a, a military which is not very well trained. And so in 1941, America officially was at war. Now Britain had been fighting for two wars. So I didn't talk about this before. But Britain was the only country in Europe, major country in Europe, fighting the Nazis from 1939 on. And you had the, <coughs> the British <coughs> Air Force called the Royal Air Force. That means British country Air Force. And you had the Nazi Air Force, it's called the Luftwaffe. It's L-U-F-F-W-A-L-F. The German word for Air Force, German Air Force. And the German Air Force, listen carefully now, the German Air Force has been attacking Britain. <laughs> well, the German Air Force attacked France and France surrendered. And then the, the, the uh, major city of France was Paris and it was occupied by the Germans. So you had one one major country before the United States was there. One major fi country fighting the Germans, and that was Britain. And you had a prime minister of Britain during the war, started, in, started there, because you had the Luftwaffe who was coming into Britain, flying over to France, which they occupied, occupied France, and they occupied Belgium, and they occupied Netherlands, and they were flying from Germany over there and they had the flights, long, long flights of bomber airlines with fighter pilots helping them. And they were attacking Britain 
particularly Britain, Britain, and particularly uh, London. They even bombed the palace of Britain in London. This is where the king and queen lived, in the palace in Britain. Now, I mention this now because I'm expanding it beyond what it was and talking now about the World War. So you had a, you had a prime minister of Winston Churchill was his name, and he was member of uh, with a parliament, and he became the prime minister. Prime minister means leader, leader of a civilian leader, and then now military leader. And obviously, he is now the military leader of Britain. And so he had a famous comment, and you can read this comment. And he said, and they were, and the idea of, Brit, of Britain was to defend the island of Britain against against the German invasion from France, basically. And so, you had the British airline, the Royal Air Force, was fighting the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force, in basically the area over Britain particularly over London. And so Winston Churchill's famous comment gone down in history is, we will not surrender. We will fight. We will fight on the beaches. We will fight in the countryside. We will fight in the cities. We will never surrender. Now notice he said, never. That was a British emphasis. In American English, it's never, but we would never surrender. And at that time, the only major country that was fighting Germany and Italy a little bit was Britain. And they were fighting them in North Africa. And they were fighting them now in Britain because the other countries, Netherlands and Denmark and, let's see, Belgium, all France occupied by the Germans, by the Nazis. And then the Italians actually invaded Ethiopia at one time in northern Africa. So you had British colonies in Africa fighting the Germanies, Germans, and then you had the fighting. Basically, it was basically in Britain because most of the, England, the European countries had surrendered. And that's another famous comment. So notice I gave you two famous comments in history. Now going back a moment to the Japanese admiral that says there will be a if you invade America, there will be an American behind e every blade of grass. Now that, again, this is emphasis, which means American civilians are going to fight you. You invade America, and American citizens, normal people are going to take their weapons and join the military and fight you. And the Japanese, I said, did invade Aleutian Islands for a short time on Alaska, but they left it because there was no advantage. No advantage at holding the Aleutian Islands. And the Aleutian Islands only a short distance from Russia. So what happened then is this is the World War. And so the United States decides we have to regroup and we have to re, re, uh, re-industrialize. We have to get all the stuff that we need. We have to build airplanes and build ships and that. Now, the one thing I didn't talk about is when the American ships were going from east coast of America, bringing supplies and equipment to Britain for a couple of years, you had... You had the German U-boat. U-boat means underwater submarine, underwater sub, underwater boat, submarine, U-boat. And you had the German in German submarines in the Atlantic Ocean. They were shooting down, shooting, well, they were basically shooting uh, American ships carrying a lot of materials to Britain, a lot. And so I didn't talk about that much because I didn't want to mention that yet. So now, again, this is the world war. You had the, you had ships in the Atlantic Ocean, ships in the Pacific Ocean, you had ships in Europe, you had, you had, uh, air, you had soldiers in North Africa, 
and world war again. Now, later, Italy tried to, in Italy tried to invade Greece, Greece, and then the Brits were helping, and then Italy tried to invade Greece, and it was not very successful. The country of Greece, and it came back. Now, Italy was not very functional. Functional mean not very good. Not very good war country. Not very good. Italy is famous for love and romance. And Rome is uh, the center, you know, of romance and that. But they were not, Italians were not very good soldiers. Not compared to German. Germans were excellent soldiers. Germany also was fighting. Germany had invaded Poland after the uh, Russians came in. And Germans were fighting in Poland and Eastern Europe against the Russians. And the Germans were fighting around Britain, attacking Britain and in other countries in Europe. And if this is the World War. And then the, you had the British were fighting mainly. The uh, Italians were in Africa, but they were not pretty good. You had Germans and British fighting in North Africa. And the Americans were not fighting yet. No. Individual, this is the key. Okay? Yeah. Stop or go? Go. You had, a, you had ordinary civilian, American citizens, civilians, they were not military. They wanted to support Britain. We're talking about Europe now. And so they, American civilians, we're talking about men, not women so much. The men were going north to Canada and then they were enlisted in Canadian forces, Canadian army, and then Canadian army would go over into Britain to fight in Britain. So you had a lot of single, single generally means not married. They're not married, so they're not worried about wife and family. They're going to, they're going to Canada and enjoy enlisting in the Canadian army. And then they would go over to Britain and fight in Europe to support Britain because Canada was was linked to Britain at that time. So Americans before it said, it's a European war. We want nothing to do with it. It's European war. And even when it became fighting between British and Germans in North Africa, we don't want to fight. We're tired of war. We went through World War I, 1914 and 1918, and Americans were in the war in 1917 and 1918. We want no war. Well, now the average person was, we want to go to war. So a woman would see a single man on the street in America, young man, that means generally under 25, maybe even 30. And she would say, why are you here? Why are you here? Why aren't you helping Canada or Britain? This is before America got involved. Why aren't you helping them? Now this is individual, individual. So individual citizens would do that, but the country did not want to have war. Well, when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, all of a sudden now the war is now three parts. It's against Germany, it's against Italy, and it's against Japan, but mainly against Japan and against Germany. So America had to get to all the equipment they needed, which takes time to, to make the equipment, airplanes and all these others. You got to make them in the factories and then you got to send them over to Britain and then you fly them and, and attack. So it takes time. The key word here is time. But the whole word is organization. And Americans wanted to support Britain and they eventually Eventually, when American army, American military was ready, they went into North Africa. I'll talk about that later. Later, the Americans did not go into Europe right away. They went into North Africa, around the country of Morocco. You look at the map, you see Morocco. Now, the Brits were fighting in Morocco and the Northern Africa, and the Americans started in the African campaign. They did not start in Europe, they started in Africa. I'll talk about that later, another time. And so the Depression basically was over. The end of the Depression now. The Depression is over because the American factories want women workers. 
and the men, a lot of the men, joined the military and were being trained to go and fight a war. So the factories are basically run in America by the women. Now you had some older American men who would be in offices and that helping, but the American women went to war. So the American women wanted to show their patriotism by working. Now these are mothers and fathers, both. You had their grandfathers and that, and they're all trying to help the United States. And then eventually later, I think if I remember right, 1944, that's when America really joined the war. Because it took time. It takes time to build your machines, to build the equipment you need, and to train the people to operate the machines. So this is why America did not join World War II quickly. So the depression is over. So I mentioned my father. He was there and and then you, you had something called the draft system. When Japan attacked America in 1941, then American, all American men were supposed to register, put their name down at the local, uh, local military recruitment center. And so my father was in Michigan and so he was working, I think at that time, he, got, he had a private job. Uh, he had left the American government working in a, in a company, in a manufacturing company, in the office. And so he, my father was going every year. That'd be 42, 43, 44, 42, 43, 44, and 45. He had to go across state because we were in western Michigan. <coughs> he, had to go to, he had to go to the recruiting office the military office in the city of Detroit. Now later I joined the United States Air Force and this is much later and I was eight, 17 years old and I had to go to that same fort. I forget the name, I think it was Fort Wayne. I had to go to that same fort. This is years later as a 17 year old volunteer in the United States Air Force. I went to that same recruitment center and I joined the Air Force there and I took my oath of allegiance in Detroit, Michigan. And then they sent me down to San Antonio, Texas. This is 1962 I'm talking about now. I was 17 years old, 1962. And you had to be 17 years old to join the U.S. military. I was 17 I went in. One month after high school, I joined the military. Went to Detroit, was accepted went by train to San Antonio, Texas and started basic training in Air Force. And so my father, years earlier, decades earlier, had gone down to Detroit, the same place I went to, and he had to be listed, they have a list of people. And he came and, and he said, I'm reporting for enlistment. Now at that time you did not have military men running the office, they were all voluntary civilians running it because the old people, old men in America couldn't fight, they were too old, but they could help the American military in the United States. So they were running the various recruitment centers. So that, that's, Detroit was Michigan Recruitment Center because my father was a Michigan resident. So he came there and it was kind of funny now. And I always wondered years later, listen carefully to this, I always wondered years later why my father had never been a soldier in World War II. But I never asked him. I listened carefully. This is private business. You don't ask things that are private. And it was none of my business because obviously I wasn't born there. I wasn't born in 1944. So I never asked my father and eventually I think my father mentioned it to me. You don't ask questions which are called sensitive. So my father did not fight in World War II as a soldier for one simple reason. He worked in a factory that was making a lot of parts. And they were doing, they had changed from making refrigerators and stuff like that. So his manufacturer, his factory, his factory was making, they were making parts for tanks, the armored tanks and also airplane parts. That's what his job was. And my father's job was actually quite important at that time. I only found out this later. 
because my father had to go around the United States. Now, at that time, you could not get on a civilian airplane and fly. It was restricted to military and government only. So my father had a pass, airport pass, to fly around the world. Not the world, the United States, excuse me. So my father would have to visit factories around the world, out of Michigan, to see that they got enough steel for his factory to work and make the parts for his factory. So the different parts, different parts, the factories are making different parts. Now there's a little t twist here, a family twist. My mother used to complain, and I remember her complaining, growing up, she used to complain that my father was usually gone during the war. In America, that meant 1941 to 1945. He was usually gone. And she had to raise two small children. My brother was born in 1941, I was born in 1944. And she was alone to, to raise two children because my father had his job to do. So when he came in to Detroit to register and say, I will volunteer, they said, no, we don't want you as a volunteer. You are too important in your job now. Getting the steel parts, when he, it was steel, you had to have steel. Getting the steel part, that's why he had the Air Force pass to fly wherever he needed to go to visit various places. And he was always flying. So notice what I said, my mother was complaining, but my father was busy. He was too important to become a common soldier, to getting killed. So eventually I learned, years later I learned why my father had never fought in the war. But I never asked him. So notice I was talking about depression. So that was the end of the depression. When the war came, immediately you had employment. Immediate employment. To make parts for ships and planes and make rifles and other things, cannons and all kinds of stuff for war. So basically that was the end of the depression. You had full deployment. Not only full deployment of men, but women had jobs. You had women nerf. And women basically had their mothers stay home and take care of the kids and the woman would go off to work in the factory. So the mother's mother, that being the grandmother, would take care of the kids and the family at home. And the women, American women, wanted to contribute. So that's how the depression ended. World War II happened. End of the depression.